Welcome back to the next section of the video lab discussion series supporting the complete PAC Learn series. An introduction to RS5000. This particular lab we call Ancillary Functions. It can be found approximately on pages 45 through 53 of Volume 1. Ancillary Functions meaning just a couple different functions that we just decided to throw in one group. Welcome back to the next section of the manual. Uh, this section is titled Ancillary Functions, which includes switching the processor modes, cutting and pasting in and out of databases, and other miscellaneous features. First one is switching processor modes. If you look on the screen, you'll see that we're in the remote run mode, as you can see up here. If that were blue, it would be the program mode. If it were gray, it would be offline. You can see we're running because you can see the logic executing. If I want to change modes, I can do it from here. I can select different modes, but normally I suggest that if you're going to just change modes, click over here on the current mode, pick the, the mode that you want, answer the default question, and now we're in the program mode, remote program mode. Now pay attention to this key switch symbol right here and the color and the text is I use the key switch. Notice that it rotated over to program. You're in the program mode. Back to the center position, the key switch, which says remote, but you're in remote program. So if I switch to the other direction, that's the run mode, but we want to switch back to the remote position for the key switch. So the key switch should always be left in the center position so you have remote access to the processor. Uh, in most cases, uh, manufacturing facilities pull the key switch out and the only way that you can change mode is to go in through the program and click on the little box here and change it to whatever mode that you want. Now, we'll go back to the pro or the run mode here for a second. And you see this first rung of logic here. If you remember, uh, these tags, switch 0 and LED 0, are not actual I.O. They're internal tags. And if we right-click on them and go down to toggle bit, that turns off switch 0, and then the logic turns off LED 0. But these aren't actually switches or LEDs. So I'm going to get rid of that rung by clicking at the head of it. Now I want you to look up here in this toolbar. Okay, uh, the first half of it we're not going to deal with in this volume of RS5000. We'll do that probably in volume two or three. We're interested in the online uh, tool functionality right here and right now the only one that's or active is the start pinning rung edit. So if I have a, a rung selected and I click on that button that's going to put that wrong in the edit mode. So let's click on that, just see what happens. Notice that now, and this is by the way, the rung that's actually running down here. See, little r for run, little i for insert. But notice that we can take it out, we can cancel pending rung edits, we can accept pending program edits, we can cancel pending program edits. Now there's a difference between pending rung edits and pending program edits. And then of course finalize all edits in the program. That's a one click does all. Well we didn't actually change anything so I'll go here and cancel pending rung edits. And notice that these are all grayed out now. So these are mode sensitive. Whatever mode you're in or if you have a rung in the edit mode. Uh, for instance, if we put this rung in the edit mode again and then click on this rung, notice that these two that were active are now grayed out. Now watch these right here when I switch back. See? So this is uh, rung edits zone. These are called edit zones and mode sensitive. So we'll just go ahead and cancel that because we don't really want to edit, but this rung I want to delete. 
we're not really using it anymore so I select it and I could right click or just hit the delete key now hitting the delete key for a wrong is not really an edit because we're not going to edit the wrong we're just getting rid of it so uh, we hit um, delete now there's a D in front of it for delete and we go to the finalize all edits button and then answer yes to this message that always comes up and voila that rung is gone now we just have our two timers from the last lab that we did now uh, how do I know what IO is attached to those tag names because I actually do have a uh, IO attached you notice the first rung quit working and now the second one quit working because I have actual IO so I'm clicking switches there but I'm looking and it says i2.data.1 well we know from our uh, tags that we created we know that that's input slot 2 uh, switch 0 and switch 1 or bit 0 and bit 1 however uh, that's not really sufficient because that could be a tag that we created as virtual IO and not real IO so how do you know what IO is actually being operated with so we go up to tools options and here's where you can change everything in the way the screen looks so we're going to go to ladder editor we're going to go to display and if you go down here show tag alias information uh, by the way 3d instruction display that's for kids lids and space cadets so uh, you see a lot of people using that just it just gives you a little more artwork on the screen to me less is more so show tag alias information if you watch in the background here when I hit apply see it change we'll leave it that way so now we can see that this tag is an alias for this tag we really don't need this tag uh, because i2 data 0 local slot 2 input data 0 that's really de redundant indications on our graphical user interface but I did that for reason just to demonstrate okay uh, online editing if and we went through a little a bit of it if you mouse over start pending rung edits we know what that does accept pending rung edits cancel pending rung edits assemble rung edits now in the old days it was a three-step process of accept test and assemble if you wanted to edit a rung online first you had to accept it then you had to put it in the test mode to see if it was going to do what you wanted but it so when you put something in the edit mode here we'll take this rung right here we'll put it in the edit mode now let's see there's two rungs alike this is the one that's running r for run i for insert i can edit this one and then when I like the edits, I can uh, go up here and accept them and then test them. When I put it in test, then this one is running and this one is not. Right now, this rung is running. And you see things changing, so you think they're both running. They're not. Remember that what you're looking at right now is an offline project in a graphic interface that is being animated animated by the online data table so any place that that tag exists on the screen right now is going to show the state see it's on it's off so these are both the same um, memory location so of course you see them both changing but this wrong is the one that's running this one is not so I can edit this one without interfering with this one when I'm ready to test it I put it in the test mode and the program processor now executes this one instead of this one if I like it then I can hit um, assemble rung edits and it takes and repositions the edited rung in place of the before edits rung and then everything is back to normal or you can just go finalize all edits so I'm going to cancel 
because we're not really editing anything here. So if you want to know what these do, just mouse over and read them. Test, untest. So let's say that you click test and it starts to run. You go, oh my goodness, that's not what I wanted. You can quick click on untest and it switches the execution from the edited rung back to the original rung. And then of course you have assemble accepted program edits or cancel accepted program edits. So even if you've accepted the rung edits or program edits, you can turn around and cancel and go back to where you're at. Remember that this development software, this programming software, this monitoring software is designed to give you the best control over the controller from your laptop or your desktop. Okay, remember this wasn't really a lab project. This was more of a um, a procedure than anything else. So let's say that we had edited something. We'll, we'll throw something in the edit mode just so we can use this button. Finalize, finalize all edits and program. Well, we really didn't do any edits, but we'll click on that anyway just so we can see this message. You should read this message at least once. But know that this message will come up every single time whether anything's wrong or not. It's kind of like a disclaimer to say, do you really know what you're doing? Because if you hit yes, you cannot undo this. See, this operation cannot be undone once you click yes. Well, we didn't change anything, so we're not worried about um, finalizing all edits. Now, something I want to mention. We'll open up controller tags here. And this tag right here, we remember we eliminated the logic that used switch zero and LED zero, but it, it left the tags behind. So the tags are still in here. So see, I'm in the run mode. I can go down and select a tag that's not being used anywhere in the program, hit the delete key, and it's gone. Go up here and click on this one, hit the delete key, and it's gone. Now you can do that. With tags that aren't being used but if I click on this one and hit the delete key it's going to say failed to delete tag I2 operation not allowed on objects referenced by other objects that tag is an object and the instructions are objects and we have logics that's using that tag so you can't delete any tags online they're being used in a program now if you were to do that offline you can delete the tag maybe, um, but then every place that tag was used, the text on that instruction will go back to the classification of an undefined tag. We could quickly go offline and test that, but uh, that's not part of this lab project. So uh, if we look, that's controller tags, and we go to program tags, and here's our slick looking program tags. Now, these aren't being referenced so I could do operations on these. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go offline. See, now it's gray. It says offline. And I'm going to... I'll go back to controller tags first. I'll select this one. Control this one. Right click. Copy. Uh, see if I can get away with this. I'm going to go back to Program Tags, right-click, Paste. Oh, there they are. Now they're in both the Program Tags and the Controller Tags. However, we don't want that. So go back to the Controller Tags and Delete. It won't let you have the same tag in two different places anyway. So um, the reason that I copy and paste and not cut and paste is because if something happens and something locks up in between cut and paste, I don't want to lose my tags. Okay, so now we go to program tags and see there they are, right there. Those are the two. Now we'll grab all these tags by put put the cursor there and they just yeah. If one's already selected, you can't drag down to select all of them. Okay, so to do that again, 
if I click here and hold the mouse down and I can drag down select them all control C go back to controller tags go here control V okay now go back to program tags they're still there so I would need to delete them from here if I want them into the controller tags I'm gonna go back to the controller tags and I, you know what I think I'll just leave them there I like them there so we go back to program tags we select all of them and hit delete now let's go to our main routine to make sure it's still happy that yeah, seat's still happy okay and just to be clever now we went offline to do all this right I'm gonna go communications who active wait till this is looks like it's happy and then say go online now you can't see it because it was off the screen I just realized it was out of the view of um, my screen capture software that is one problem with trying to keep everything as large as possible and give the best resolution it's hard to keep everything in the screen so I may repeat that process here real quick just give it a chance to okay um, we could upload or download let's upload because when we left online it was the way we wanted it so in this case I have a choice I can download what I just did or I can go online and then upload what was already in the controller because remember that so to speak the program exists both offline and online what you see on the screen is only offline but the actual code that's in the controller has a offline copy and an online copy so when you go online if they don't match it's going to ask you you're either going to have to upload or download you can't just go online so I chose upload because I know that's what's in the controller is correct and what's offline I don't know I was changing stuff I don't want to take a chance now in this case this is just a little lab project so we couldn't do a whole lot of harm if we messed up the program so we can go to main program here expand double click to open up the routine and there we are we're back running again so you can see how to cut and paste and move things around in the databases you can do some of that online but I would suggest that if you're going to do much um, I would do it I would stick to offline okay that's it for this little section uh, thank you for watching we'll catch up to you in the next one thank you for watching the video lab discussion ancillary functions